everybody. Keith, a.k.a. Gator Guy 231 here to break down Monday's three games of EPL action. The big GPP, and, you know, kind of where a lot of the attention will be, is at 315 for Wolves versus Palace. But at one, we do have a starter, so to speak, of uh, two games, uh, Classic Slate, and you can also play the showdown. But we are going to be breaking down all the games today. Um, you know, I think one thing I want to kind of just point out the two ma- two game weeks left, uh, so you know, understanding what the teams are playing for is going to be critical to our success. You know, if you, um, you know, Madrid versus Leganes today in La Liga was a great example. Madrid had nothing to play for. Leganes had everything to play for. Um, if they won, they potentially would avoid relegation. Uh, it didn't happen that way, but they gave them a hell of a game, two to two. Um, so you know, just keep that in mind. Like these teams that you know, are busting their ass to get a win versus, you know, a team that's just in coast mode and ready to, you know, just call it a summer after one of the weirdest seasons ever, you know, that matters. So, you know, with that in mind, let's kind of get right into the games. Um, so first off, like, let's just go to each one and talk about what they're playing for. For So Newcastle versus Brighton, um, Brighton's minus 125. I think that's because there's like these – a 0.1% chance, maybe, it might even be 0.1, that, that Brighton needs to win to avoid relegation, but they're not going to get relegated. Um, but, you know, I guess they can secure things. Newcastle is squarely in the middle, but Brighton's minus 125 at home. Second game, Everton versus Sheffield. Everton never actually came back from break. They are still sleepwalking because they are firmly in the mid-table, you know, where Everton normally is. Um so, you know, they're just trying to get to the finish line. Sheffield has an outside chance at Europe, so they will definitely be busting their asses. Um, and Chris Wilder's team, they just, you know, after kind of a struggling start, but a lot of it due to injury, especially Jack O'Connell, now that he's back in the full, John Fleck might be back in the full. I think that you're going to see Sheffield kind of roll in um, in this game. And then the big game, um, you know, for keep for DFS purposes because it's the biggest prize pools. Wolves minus two twelve. Wolves does have an outside shot at Europe as well. Actually, a better shot than Sheffield. Crystal Palace, you know, firmly in the mid table, not going to get relegated, not going to get into Europe. So they're just going to show up and go through the motions. So you know, I do want to start out with um, the showdown because I think that's a lot of what you guys are here for. So, you know, I'm actually recording this in like the middle of the night on Monday because I can't sleep. Um, so we're going to use our friends over at Foot Fantasy Football Scout because Sofa Score still does not have it up. And uh, But this will give us a good idea. So let's get to Wolves. And I thought they would be down here. There we go. Um, now Wolves, you know, over and over again, is playing like very much uh, a similar formation. Now, I think that this is wrong. <laughs> um, actually, I very much think that this is wrong. I, I probably should have looked at this before I went, but my guess is that we're going to see Triore over here and definitely see Moutinho in the mix. Now, a big thing with Wolves, um, they either do this 3 4 3 or they do like a uh, 3 5 2. So, um, and a 3 5 2 is when Triore normally doesn't play. Um, if it's a 3-4-3, three, three, he plays like a right wing. And we saw last week they actually left Podence in and let him play wing back. But he's still like was very, very much attacking. And he, I think, is going to be one of the most important players on the slate, is Adam Um Getting a ton of buzz um, from the, you know, just the transfer markets, whether it's Madrid, whether it's Chelsea, he's just a force. Um, he crosses, takes people on. The funny thing is he'd even be better for DFS if he went down more. But he doesn't want to take fouls. He wants to just keep going. So, you know, a lot of times he's bouncing off guys, hitting the touchline, and trying to look for uh, Raul Jimenez in the middle. So that's a really good correlation stack um, is Traore and Jimenez, assuming Traore's in. If not, Daniel Potence is in. I, I guess he's fine. Not really much of a cash play for me. Um, neither he nor um, – or Diego Jota really uh, have much of a floor, but both can obviously show up the goals. Um, I do think it's worth noting, if for some reason we don't see Moutinho in, I, I don't see a reason why we wouldn't considering the stakes in the game. But if you don't see Moutinho, Pedro Neto, if in, would take the sets. If we don't see um, uh, Neto or Moutinho, then it probably would be Ruben Neves um, and maybe even some Daniel Poden. So just, just keep that in mind in case things get weird. 
A good thing about showdown is we know the lineups ahead of time, um, so we can adjust accordingly. Raul Jimenez, despite being kind of goal dependent, I still think is going to be a lock in your lineups. Um, with Wolves being as favored as they are, I don't see you really going towards Palace pieces. Um, like, I don't think it's a Wolf Zaha slate. Um, Jordan Ayu is always in play, but I, I don't think that you're really spinning up for any of either of them. Raul Jimenez will be like 80% owned. So likely, um, you know, somebody that you want to get in your lineups, uh, you know, and, and potentially even maybe be, be your captain. Now these wingbacks, uh, I'm assuming Doherty and Johnny will be back in. Here's the thing about the both of them. Don't let the logs mis mislead you. They don't have the best DFS for us. They're not big crossers. You know, we normally love to play wingbacks out wide because they're going to cross the ball. Not so much with Doherty and Johnny. Now Doherty is the, my favorite of the two because he does have possess a lot of goal threats. Um, don't know, I don't have his numbers offhand uh, of how many he scored this year, but last year I think it was like seven or eight goals. A lot of headers um, that he'll show up late in the box on. So I think of the two, Doherty is the upside play, whereas Johnny, you know, just, just kind of exists. Like if you watch Johnny Johnny play, you'll immediately like regret if he's in your lineup. Like Ruben Vinagra, who played last week, a lot, lot more DFS friendly, but Johnny should be back in. Ruben Neves continues to be underpriced. He's only 4,400 on the slate, which I think is going to make him one of the most popular players on the slate. Just an insanely good midfielder. It doesn't always translate for DFS, but um, just super, super quality. Um, and somebody that, you know, is going to fit into a lot of builds. So expect him to be popular. Um, then Donker will be also be cheap and popular, um, if in. I prefer him when they play um, like the five-man midfield. He has a little bit more freedom to go forward. Um, Nevis kind of sits deep. In this 3-4-3, three, three, um, he has a lot more defensive work. So just look at that. Uh, I think it's just worth noting. Now, Jao Moutinho, like I'm almost positive will be in. He'll either take this Dendonker spot in the 3-4-3 three, three, or in a 3-5-2 will just kind of be over here. He takes all of um, Wolves' sets when he's in. Um, and that's really unfortunate all he really does. He'll get you a tackle or two. Not a high-volume shooter. Not really a scoring threat. Um, but obviously with you know, them being a huge favorite, him being on the sets has a good chance for assist upside. I think he's on 8K. So, you know, he could be a cash lock. Do you want to go different? He might be somebody to differentiate from in GPP um, just to look for upside plays. Um, finally, I just think it's worth noting, obviously, uh, Bully and Sice can both show up at the goal. They get four out headers. Connor Cody actually will never cross midfield. So he's not a goal threat. Um, Rui Patricio, though, I think is really interesting from a game theory perspective. He, they priced him way up, which I think was going to lower his ownership a ton. Um, let's say that this game only was like in one nothing, 2 nothing, um, And let's say both goals are from Raul Jimenez. You're probably going to want Rui Patricio in. Um, you know, like two saves that's in a clean sheet win, that's 14 DK. And immediately, um, you know, can make up – that. that's a goal's worth of points. So – I don't know if, you know, outside of like Raul Jimenez and Amsama Shore, if anybody else is going to get to that um, without a goal or assist. So just keep that in mind from like a game theory perspective. Uh, I think that wraps up Wolves pretty good. Let's go to Palace. Um, so Patrick Van Anholt um, got really injured. I think it's separated shoulders. So he's out. Um, I saw on the Rotowire notes that Luka Milojosevic is going to be a game time call. So here's the what all that means for you. If um, if both of them, obviously Van Ann holds out, but if Mojo Sevich misses, James McCarthy at 3,600 would be on set pieces, um, at least half the corners. I also think it could move Andrus Townsend to the other corners. Um, Townsend was awesome, just awesome. Like, not vintage Townsend. Vintage Townsend would have had like 27 crosses but just looked amazing versus United. I think he's kind of playing at this point. Like, he's kind of fallen out of favor at Palace towards the end of the season. They're either playing for a new job or a spot still on the team. So I really like that type of player um, that has a lot to play for. So Townsend, uh, his cheap. McCarthy's even cheaper at 3600 They could be on set pieces. I think will be popular plays. Jordan Ayu and Wolf Zaha are a little expensive for my blood for this slate. I'd rather spend, this, this, spend the money on Wolf's pieces um, Reedwall, I think um, I think he's close to min price. Likely would start at left back. 
um, for Van Anholt. Here's the thing. He's like a natural center back or like center defensive midfielder by trade. He's not going to get forward at all. So while it might look great on paper, get a fullback, just understand like you're, you're drawing to like three or four DK. So just like if he's the last man in, you have to get a piece, then fine. But if you can find the money to get up to McCarthy, I think that provides much more upside. Um, MacArthur is coming off of a ceiling game. That's just a great time to fade. So that's what I would be doing. Um, yeah, just you're not going to be getting much palace. The one thing I was, I, I've harped on over and over again on these showdown slates is that dog keepers always go under own. So if you think that, um, and, you know, and honestly, what was it, the slate on Saturday, uh, the uh, Burnley versus Norwich, um, even after two red cards, Tim Krul, the dog keeper from Norse, ended up in the, the GPP line, our GPP winning line, despite conceding two. So um, dog keepers are always going to go under own, have big ceiling. Uh, so, yeah, just don't overlook Yata if you're making a ton of lineups. You can absolutely make like a 5-1 Wolves stack versus Yata. Um, and if he gets, uh, you know, six saves, concedes two goals, you, you're probably going to win. Um, okay, I think that describes what else. I, I, just one more thing on that whole GPP. Um, just keep in mind, like, there's going to most likely be, like, really, really chalk builds that is going to come up. Um, and if you feel like you're on the chalk build, just understand on, like, how many people are in this GPP, you're going to have to move. So whether that means, you know, going some of the contrarian. So I think, like, a Rui Patricio at uh, captain is going to be, very under owned. I, I think he might only show up like 30, 35% owned um, overall because of his price. And then if you put him in the captain spot, maybe you're in single digits. Uh, and if he shows up, you know, five saves, clean sheet win, that's 20 DK. That's almost two goals worth of points right there for like, you know, like a five to 7% owned captain. That'd be huge. Um, but yeah, like Raul Jimenez, uh, Traore, Moutinho, um, probably be your most cop- popular captains. So, like, maybe going like a Matt Doherty correlated with, like, uh, uh, Rui Patricio, Raul Jimenez, Trior, something like that. Like, just understand you've got to be different in order to win. And if you're playing GPPs, I said this last time, but if you're playing with GPPs just to min cash, that's a negative expected value long term. You've got to be playing to win. All right. So, with that in mind, let's jump back to uh, the classic slate. So, we're going to start with Brighton. <clears throat> who technically is the biggest favorite on the slate. Here's the thing about Brighton. If you know you're new to soccer or you just don't pl- uh, play a lot of EPL, Brighton's lineup, Graham Potter barely knows, <laughs> like nobody can really predict Brighton's line because their coach barely knows who's going to play. So it's just kind of going to go over the situations and who to look at. Um, so I think Pascal Gross will start. Uh, this sense doesn't have it, but Pascal Gross most likely will start. When Pascal Gross is in, he takes set pieces. He's also forward eligible, so he will immediately be one of the more popular plays because filling the forward spots in this classic slate is not easy. Um, if he is not in, you next want to look for Sully March and Aaron Moy. Um, if March is in, he'll take half the corners like they split with Moy. Um, if not, and like this formation that Fantasy Football Scott has, you know, holds up, Moy would take all of the set pieces and it's like a really, really affordable price. So he would be a lock in your lineups as, you know, the biggest favorite set taker. Um, I think Lynn Murray, honestly, the old man has earned another start. He played really well, had the assist to Malpoy versus Southampton. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to the two-striker system here. Um, it's funny to look at uh, Tarek Lamptey's price. He's been, like, almost min price for, like, three weeks. Uh, he has a terrible game, and he gets jacked up to 5,100. So even if he is in, he will not be a play for me. Uh, Montoya uh, is a lot cheaper. So that's what they have projected in. So he's very much in play. Former Barcelona Academy guy. Um, so you can do worse. Um, Neil Malpoy, just to go over him, a high volume shooter. I think he will be pretty popular considering the biggest favorite. Um, and, you know, he likes to score goals. So, yeah, that, that's a good thing to, to see. Trostar, also a really good player, although he will more than likely be lacking any sort of set piece share um, this game. But solid play nonetheless helps you fill a forward spot. Dan Byrne, natural center back, does his, does a decent job at left back, but he's not going to be a big crosser. So he's just kind of there. If you, if he's your last defender and then you're good. 
Uh, that covers Brighton pretty good. Let's go over to Newcastle. I think that the book starts to be a little hard on Newcastle here. They 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 can show up and play well here. Let's go over a couple of the plays. Let me just get a quick drink. So let's start with the set pieces. Matt Ritchie and John Joe Shelby will split. John Joe Shelby has a lot more work to do on the team than Matt Ritchie does. Um, who really plays box to box midfield. Um, so and also, you know, is always a threat for a yellow. So just from a pure DFS perspective, Richie's better player, just gets forward more, has more opportunities to get involved in the attack. He'd be by far my favorite Newcastle piece. And somebody, even though they're the biggest dog, I would say I think I'm gonna build around. Um, would be interesting if Lazaro is in. Lazaro's taken set pieces before as well. So maybe he would steal some from Shelby. I don't think he would take it from Richie. Uh, they do like to, uh, Newcastle likes to do in swinging crosses. Um, both Lazaro and Shelby are right-footed. Um, Richie would take all the ones on the left or the ones swinging in. So I think he would be safe. Uh, Miguel Almiron always shows up in people's cash lineups. Um, I guess he's, you know, looking better, better in the EPL, but that's just kind of like a hill I'm on that, uh, you know, he's always like mid six Ks. Um, I just, I, I, I don't, I don't want to do it. <laughs> so um, I won't be playing him in cash most likely. I say that and now like I feel like an asshole when I show up with it, but uh, just never, you know, the type of play I like, I like to shoot for a little more upside or set pieces. So I either want like, a really good four or I want upside for my four spots. Uh, Dwight Gill, definitely GPP only. Um, that really does wrap up Newcastle. The fullbacks, fullbacks don't get forward much. Danny Rhodes used to be a crosser for Spurs. I feel like he hasn't crossed the ball once for uh, Newcastle. Mankio, pretty much the same. If you see Yedlin in, he's really cheap, but just doesn't do much. Um, also, just, you know, somebody that got priced down that I just want to mention, if Joe Ellington makes the, makes the lineup again, especially if he's out wide, I think that would be an interesting play at like 5K. Uh, all right, let's go to uh, Sheffield, who I think is actually my favorite team to stack up um, this slate. Uh, and big reason is just that I just think Everton has given kind of just looked terrible. Like, I thought Villa would win that game, and they should have, uh, minus like a fluke header at the end. Uh, Sheffield's playing for a lot, so I really think that Sheffield could take it to them. First thing is just go over sets. John Fleck and Oliver Norwood split. They both play centrally. Fleck's price is out of control for somebody coming back from an injury. I don't know if he's fit for 90. Um, so despite Sheffield being uh, the second biggest favorite, I don't think I'm going to play John Fleck outside of some like GPP, just stack them up type of things. Norwood is a fine price. Uh, Nor we, just like we um, talked about, who was it, with Newcastle, um, Sheffield also does, likes in-swinging crosses when both of them are on. Snorl would take the ones that come in from the right, left, whichever, and flex the other sets, so whichever one the in-swingers. In um, that is how Chris Wilder and the, the Blades like to do them. Um, this whole entire midfield here is all cash viable. Uh, Burge would be like the one that has the least amount of floor, but both the fullbacks um, should be able to get forward here. McBurney, McBold McGoldrick, they're both GPP, more or less, but McBurney's been on a nice run. So uh, if, you know, you want to go for go, get a little bit, like what is Luis Pacheco, cash with flair. If you want a little bit of flair, maybe consider like a McBurney. McGoldrick, I didn't look at his price. But, you know, he's goal robust. He had the two goals two games ago. Those are his first two goals in the season. But, you know, he does a lot of work for them. So that's why, he, you know, he continues to start. Uh, does a lot of the dirty work uh, and just, you know, with pressing and, and doing all those things. Um, other things, just if you're new, uh, Sheffield's back three, these two, um, you know, center backs actually do get forward and cross. They'll overlap sometimes. Jack O'Connell has always been my favorite of the bunch. Uh, he's actually fairly expensive. I, look, I always try to look at, like, those them first to see if one of them's, like, 2,800, and I can just, you know, play them in cash. I think he was, like, 4K. But he will overlap Stevens a little bit, maybe get two, three crosses in the game. Um, Dean Henderson, I expect to be the most popular um, goalie. Uh, just Brighton's been known to concede. Uh, so I think that people would prefer Dean Henderson, uh, Manchester United goalie that is on loan with Sheffield um, over uh, Matt Ryan. Other thing to notice to note is that Sheffield is really good at home. Um, yeah, I understand that there's no crowd, but, you know, the pitch still matters. So I really do like Dean Henderson. I think he has a good shot at clean sheet. Um, Everton. So do not get carried away with them would be my, my suggestion. So if no Sigurdsson, Lucas Dean should be on all set pieces. 
Um, even without with Sigurdsson in, Lucasine is probably still the first guy into your lineups. Only 7,200. I think it was 72. It might have been 75. Regardless, anything under 8K, he's just for cash purposes, just the first guy in. Um, so for Charleston, um, you know, used to be everybody's like favorite, like forward that doesn't have sets, but still you know, draws fouls, takes shots. Then he shows up with a negative last game versus Eston Velos, whose defense is dreadful. So, um, you know, it, it, the, here's the true statement and like, you know, DFS leverage 101. After that game, his ownership is going to like cut by like 75%. So I don't even know if he'll be that owned. So, you know, it might be a great spot to go back to him. Um, I've kind of made my my feelings about Everton clear. I'm not going to be going much Everton at all. Um, Gordon could take a few set pieces, went on, but it's an early sub risk. Walcott did have the goal, forward eligible, um, always has some open play value, but most likely will sub early too. Coleman, I just think is interesting just because his price. I thought he'd be like close to 5K the way they price defenders, and he was in the low fours. I think he's better than that. Pure GPP, Dominic Calvert Lewin, it's kind of been on a goal, what is it, drought. Um, since coming back, I don't think he gets off of it here, but you know, I would, he's going to be low owned. So if you want to shoot for a goal, um, you know, maybe like a Dean Cal or Lewin stack, I think that works. Um, yeah, I think that, that kind of wraps up Leverton. There's not a lot to see with them. Um, and that will wrap it up for this, this episode. So I really want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you, uh, like subscribe and comment if you are enjoying the content and good luck in the contest today. Take it easy. Thank <laughs> you.